Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. First of all, thanks a lot for all the support on the series and all on the other videos as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That keeps me going and if you're liking these kind of videos, this kind of content, please, please, please make sure you support the channel by liking the videos and by subscribing to the channel so that you're not missing out on any content. With that out of the way, let's get started with today's video. We will be covering the hydraulic system of uh, the MD82 and I'll be using Leonardo's MD82 in Microsoft Flight Simulator to showcase uh, some of the things to you guys when we get to that point. So I'll start first with what all is there in the hydraulic system for the MD82 and then I'll cover the pumps that are involved and then we'll get into the cockpit and look at what we need to look at inside the cockpit. So let's start with the overall briefing of the hydraulic system first. All right, so let's start with the basics of hydraulic systems. So here we have two uh, independent hydraulic systems present in the MD82. One is the left one and one is the right one. A lot of services are controlled by either of them, but there are some services like let's say the left and right uh, wheel brakes, which are controlled by both, as in served by both left and right hydraulic system. So if one of them goes bad, these services that are being controlled by both of them will be operating at a reduced rate. And you can assume why you just won't you just won't have the hydraulic fluid coming in from one side so the actuation will be slower than or at a reduced rate than uh, if both of them were active so i leave this on here but you can look at which uh, which services are controlled by which side uh, of the hydraulic system here all right now coming to the layout of the hydraulic system that is how it looks like in a, in a crude way this is how it looks like so you start from the reservoirs here which are uh, both 17 usg and then that feeds into the engine driven mechanical pump and that feeds the hydraulic fluid into all the services that it needs to serve you have the electric auxiliary pump only on the right hydraulic system so if the right engine is not running you can have the electrical auxiliary pump on and you, you can have the uh, hydraulic fluid serving all of these systems uh, that are being served by the right hydraulic system and then one more important component of the hydraulic system is power transfer unit which is a mechanical connection between both left and right hydraulic system so when you have that um, set to on the hydraulic fluid will be able to flow uh, across the two systems so the two mechanical engine driven pumps are designed to be providing more than 3000 psi of hydraulic pressure but in order to extend the hydraulic system's service life you can turn them down to 1500 psi and we'll go to the cockpit and see how to do that but you can turn them down to 1500 psi when that kind of high pressure of 3000 psi plus is not required and that will help with extending the hydraulic system life because it doesn't have to bear that high uh, the uh, mechanically doesn't have to bear that high pressure for a long time now but if we talk about the electric auxiliary pump that is designed to continuously provide 3000 psi to uh, to all of these uh, systems here uh, that one cannot be turned to 1500 psi i think as far as i know that is designed to to provide 3000 psi consistently as the manual says it, it can be run in continuous operation and obviously the power transfer unit here which will connect which will connect the left and right uh, hydraulic system mechanically so whichever side has higher pressure it will flow from the high pressure to the low pressure side and that is what the ptu enables okay so we are in the md82 right now and i have both the engines running as you can see and uh, let's start from where the hydraulic pressure and quantity is showing up so if you look at the middle panel here you will see hydraulic pressure in psi and says in 200 so whatever the number is here multiplied by 100 is our uh, current hydraulic pressure from both left and right systems so 3100 on the left and 3000 on the right and we have about 14 14 qts of hydraulic fluid in the reservoir so this is where you, this is where the hydraulic fluid quantity shows up now let's go over the hydraulic pumps panel here which you'll find on the co-pilot side and really weird place to have the hydraulic panel right i i would think that it's supposed to be on the 
um, overhead panel but here we are it is right here on the left leg of the co-pilot so first of all uh, we have the engine driven mechanical pump switches so currently it's on high and that is where you will see that we have 3000 psi on both the systems if we turn this to low you will see that the hydraulic pressure will drop to uh, 1500 psi let's wait for it to drop and everything responds realistically and slowly on this so uh, they've done a great job at modeling these systems so we, there we go we are at 15 psi on both the sides and if you turn it off the hydraulic pressure should reduce down to zero so that means you will not be getting any hydraulic pressure and you won't be able to um, you won't be able to serve any of those uh, actuators that we talked about uh, in the presentation again you see how slowly and there's some imbalance as well in between and then it goes to zero okay i am going to turn this to low again okay so the third switch here is the auxiliary electric pump switch which we just talked about right we have an auxiliary electric pump on the right side which serves even when the right side engine is not running right now it is in the off position so that means the electric pump is off if i turn this to on position that is going to increase the hydraulic pressure right away to 30 psi you see that but that'll just be on the right side because this pump is only driving fluid into the right um, hydraulic system um, off position will again turn that pump off you can hear that pump in the background actually i don't know if that will come into the video or not but when i turn it on i can hear it in the background back to 15 psi you'll see it reducing now since we have turned the hydraulic pump off I'll let it go to 15 first and um, the override position is a continuous hold position and that is mainly to override the uh, overheating system so if if we have this to on and if there's overheating going on in the hydraulic system it will turn the electric pump to off but if you want to override that overheating system you can hold it on to override and it will right away give you 3000 psi on the on the right end right and if you leave it it will spring back onto the off position it will turn the electric pump off so this is to instantly get hydraulic pressure if you uh, want to do that by overriding the overheating system so we have covered these three now the only one left is the um, the hydraulic transfer unit so now to demonstrate this let me turn the electric pump on so that one of our uh, one of the side goes to 3000 psi and now if i turn on the transfer unit you will see that um, the left and right hydraulic systems are now mechanically connected and even the left system has started reading higher pressure because the higher pressure from the right side has now flown into the left side but it won't just be at 30 it won't quite be at the exact pressure but you will start getting enough uh, enough pressure on the left side as well all right so let's simulate a situation here so let's say we have our uh, left engine completely drop out right so i'm going to do i'm going to simulate that by simply cutting out the fuel on the left engine okay so once the engine is fully shut down which you see it happening here you will see that the hydraulic pressure will drop to zero because we only have the engine driven mechanical pumps set to low and we don't have the left engine running and we don't have the um, hydraulic transfer unit on so our left and right hydraulic systems are independent of each other and one is not receiving any um, any driving force from the engine so that that side will completely be turned off now how do we fix this uh, how do we fix this situation so what we can do is first of all we'll turn the hydraulic pumps off for the left engine because that engine is not running at all then you would turn the hydraulic pumps to high for the uh, for the right engine which is the engine that's running and then turn the hydraulic transfer unit on so what that will do is since we have enough pressure on the right side the pressure is going to transfer from right to left and you will now also have hydraulic pressure on the left side so all the components that were operating 
uh, through the left side hydraulic system can still operate at similar rate uh, by doing this even when you have the left engine off now if i am saying something wrong here uh, real pilots or you know people who know more than me about the mdt2 please correct me here but this is what i have read on the forums and this is what i have found out from the manuals one thing you can also do is let's say you have the hydraulic pumps low you can also if you if you have both the if you have both the uh, engines out you still have the electric pump at your disposal right so right now i have both the hydraulic pumps off i don't have one engine off but i'm going to simulate assume that this engine is off and i'm losing pressure on both the engine driven hydraulic pumps now in that situation once we get to zero yeah we have gotten zero in that situation i can turn on the auxiliary pump which will pressurize my right side hydraulic system and then i can turn on the hydraulic transfer unit which will transfer the same amount of pressure to the left side as well so even when both the engines are down the electrical hydraulic pump can serve us to have full hydraulic capability on the airplane so that we can deploy our flaps spoilers landing gears and brakes and whatever the hydraulic system operates all right so that was a quick review of the hydraulic system on md82 if i made any mistakes if i said something wrong i honestly apologize i i'm genuinely just trying to help and make lives better for new simmers who are trying to understand the systems while also flying the aircraft but if you are a real world pilot if you are uh, if you know more about the md82 than i do please make sure you leave a comment down below on any any corrections that you feel i should include in this video and what i will do is compile all of those corrections and pin the comment so whoever is watching this video make sure you just glance through the comment section so that if there is any pinned comment that i would have included you would know if there are any corrections uh, for this video but yeah overall i think that's all i wanted to cover in this video uh, next one i'll see which system depending on the time i have out of my full time job and part time studies uh, i'll see which system i can cover in the next video more full flight videos for pmdg 737 are coming as well um, and yeah i Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thanks a lot for giving your time and I hope you learned something new in this video. And please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you're not missing out on any any further content on this series or on any other videos that I'll be uploading. By the way, I have up upgraded my PC to 5800X3D and uh, 6950XT. If you haven't checked out that video please make sure you check it out i haven't uploaded a benchmarks or settings video yet but i'll plan to do a a really comprehensive settings and benchmark video for amd users soon so keep an eye out for that and i think that is it i'll see you in the next video see you guys stay safe and have fun happy flying